Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Rupa. I work for Cumulus Linux, Cumulus Networks, on Cumulus Linux, um, just doing kernel Linux stuff. I have uh, I have talked at OCP before. That's two years back. It's OK if you have forgotten me or forgotten my talk, because I have sto stolen some slides from that. Um, in general, that talk was also a some focused on Linux networking and how you can run Linux natively on a switch ASIC. So a little bit of, uh, to set the stage and background, um, this conference is all about disaggregation. So I'm sure every other talk here has talked about disaggregation for hardware and software and also software disaggregation. So I want to talk a little more about open switch hardware and Linux networking a journey of the Linux switch hardware in the Linux kernel and community, how you can leverage the Linux kernel um, subsystems and Linux kernel APIs to offload to switch ASIC, new networking features for the data center fabric, and um, how can you leverage Linux ecosystem. And also, I'll be covering a little bit on how to build data center fabrics like eVPN uh, on Linux, with Linux and open switch hardware. So we have talked a lot about open switch hardware and Linux here in this conference. And running native Linux on an open switch hardware, is it a revolution or revolution? So that's, that's always the question. And if you see historically open compute hardware, whether it's a hypervisor or server, running Linux networking with, on NICs or NPUs, they do use the Linux kernel uh, API and hardware offload subsystems and abstractions to offload to hardware. And there is no other model in, uh, in such uh, systems. For servers, we always go first model is disaggregation. And you run Linux and use Linux uh, APIs and drivers. So every hardware that comes today has a driver for Linux. And you use the Linux hardware model offload, offload model and also the virtual hardware models that we use with Linux, what we test with Linux, like uh, with, uh, on the server side, uh, networking especially. You have Vertio and many other virtual hardware, network hardwares, which you can test without having a real hardware. So all this is very important for deploying and um, building solutions on top, networking solutions on top of Linux and hardware, open hardware. So the same picture, you flip around. This time, instead of a NIC and NPU, uh, you have the network switch ASICs. So the same things apply. You can run the same Linux, the same routing stack, and same neighbor table, same ARP cache on, on your switch ASIC. And the Linux network forwarding model becomes the model for testing your network deployments. And that's, that's the key. That's the advantage that you get from this model. And again, a virtual Linux forwarding model provides the ability to test networking without hardware. So to me, it's a natural evolution. You have just introduced a new hardware into the Linux kernel ecosystem. So, and it, you just have unified your architecture for your hypervisors, servers, and switch ASICs, and so on. And we have, I work in the community a lot, and we have seen uh, through the years that cross-technology pollination on Linux is, is very, important and you can see how any new abstraction or uh, hardware introduced creates subsystems, subsystem APIs which can every other subsystem can leverage. So that's uh, very important and that's how Linux grows so fast and things are supported in Linux so at a faster pace. In this model where you use Linux networking natively, there is no special app lib or config DB or app DB or any of that sort. Your application is written for Linux and Linux networking. And it uses the kernel tables, networking tables, whether it's routing, bridging, neighbor, or net filter. And you translate that to hardware. I just add this slide because I got some review feedback to add some OCP hardware. So basically, yes, it's, uh, there is a pointer to another HCL from Cumulus Linux, which talks about how Linux is supported on what kind of hardware, what OCP hardware. And uh, we have talked, I mean, Scott has talked about many of this hardware, even now Minipack uh, running native Linux uh, APIs is being showcased at, uh, at this conference. So a little more. Uh, this, the architecture that I'm talking about is, again, 
using the Linux kernel, routing, policy, da policy database, WERFs, bridging, uh, packet filtering, VXLAN, MPLS, and the recent eBPF hooks and eBPF offload for switch ASICs. And you can see all the apps here, the networking apps. They're talking Linux networking API, which is Netlink. And the, this gets translated to the kernel of kernel networking subsystems. And after that, the drivers and switch ASIC. Or the network, in our case, we also use the Netlink API as an API to offload to hardware for the drivers in user space. Because as you know, in this uh, world of switch ASICs, there are today SDKs drivers that are only supported in user space. So a little bit on what's going on in the community. Uh, the networking community and maintainer, maintainer's name is David Miller. He is very welcome to patches from anybody supporting open switch ASIC on, in the Linux kernel. There are new abstractions being written. We started with something called switch DevOps, but uh, soon we realized that whatever Linux had, like the Net DevOps, if you've written a Linux driver for a driver, networking driver, you know what Net DevOps is. That's the first thing you write or the first thing that you register with Linux subsystems. And we have also added extensions to the Netlink API to support switch deployments, uh, whether it's a flag to indicate uh, recent, uh, in, for example, traffic classifier, there is a hardware offload flag, or there is also extensions for eVPN, new port channel parameters, bridging parameters, and so on. And uh, the Linux kernel also has received new features like WERFs, VX many patches, many improvements to VXLAN, especially in scaling, eVPN data plane, MPLS, and so on. And I have seen over and over again, such features have found use not just for Linux on switch ASICs, but also on the hosts and hypervisors. So that's, that's a advantage of working with the Linux community. Uh, you see a lot of uh, features and abstractions getting used across different Linux networking devices. You leverage, uh, that's the main thing. So to me, Linux always provides uh, these building blocks which you can build and uh, deploy solutions, networking solutions on. And we see this over and over again. Um, the recent uh, eVPN, I'm gonna be talking about eVPN a lot, but eVPN is one such technology which is deployed heavily today. And that was simply built. The Linux forwarding plane for eVPN was built by some of these blocks. For example, the Linux bridge. You take Linux bonding, Linux routing, and VXLAN data plane. So you put these, you can stack these pieces together and build a solution around it. And you will see how little you had to develop additionally to support this. And we have had uh, even people uh, who try our solutions built on this for example, on the, on the host. So it's easy to migrate between, on any um, device running Linux networking stack. What is the Linux networking ecosystem? So here is a list of, I've, I usually put references in my slides so that if people want to refer later, but we are talking about protocols that we, Linux already has implementations for, like DHCP and VRRP and LLTP. You do not want to be writing these protocols and stacks over and over again for every operating system that you want to run on your network device. So Linux has that, and most of these pointers that I've put in here is uh, from Debian mainly. IP Route 2 is also maintained by the Linux kernel community. It is a set of tools to uh, manage and configure networking on Linux. And free range routing, as you know, this is kind of a very popular routing suite today. And it, uh, eVPN implementation of in FRR is one of the open, best open eVPN implementations today. And then you get all the other things for free, like monitoring, service monitoring with system D and Linux traffic classifier and everyone's beloved IP tables and IP6 tables. Apparently nobody moves away from there. <laughs> People have been trying to develop new things, uh, new packet filtering stacks for Linux, but yes, NetFilter has always been everybody's uh, favorite. So the latest coolest things in, uh, if you're following Linux networking uh, kernel community, it's about eBPF programmability. Um, and you see hooks 
amazing creative solutions being developed in every networking subsystem, whether it's routing or C groups or network tracing, TCP congestion control algorithms, um, even filtering. Today we have hooks, eBPF hooks in the TC, if Linux traffic classifier and IP tables to write your own programmable um, hooks. And also this eBPF is also used to accelerate the Linux data path. Now let's come to switch hardware and Linux uh, networking in the data center. I just want to go over a few uh, architectures uh, and how you deploy, how you use Linux. So everyone knows this picture. It's a modern data center across uh, topology. How do you build a layer three gateway on using Linux and um, a switch ASIC? So Linux has everything today, routing, the routing fib, FRR, the, most, uh, the best routing suite available today, an open uh, routing protocol stack. You can use it with the Linux kernel fib and VRF and neighbor subsystem. And also a switch, and you have a switch with the layer three support, and there you go, you have a data center fabric with uh, pure layer three uh, data center fabric. So this is just a picture showing the same thing. Uh, it's just with uh, FRR and Linux kernel as your L3 um, software stack. The same thing, L2 layer, layer two, layer three gateways. You will see, you, you have everything uh, in the kernel that you need. It's a Linux bridge driver and the forwarding database. Linux bridge supports uh, STP and IGMP snooping and all everything that you need today to deploy a good layer two fabric. And there are many open source implementations, for example, MSTPD. And here, this is another picture. In this picture, it just gives you a look at how you put these blocks together in Linux. For example, there's a, the Linux bridge driver and, um, yeah, and have a VLAN interface on top of it to create the routing, bridging and routing combination. So network virtualization and overlay gateways. Again, uh, Linux has had a VXLAN driver and VXLAN implementation since a really long time. And here. So this is another picture which shows you how you can build a layer two a Linux overlay gateway. And I have snapshots of Linux forwarding tables, how to use Linux forwarding, uh, bridge forwarding table and VXLAN forwarding uh, table. Uh, here. So basically, you stack the VXLAN and bridge driver on top of each other and there. So now coming to eVPN. I think from in the past last two years, I've personally spent a lot of time on eVPN to get Linux kernel forwarding plane working for eVPN. And FRR, obviously, there is a lot of work has gone in into developing the eVPN control plane and with BGP. So for people not very familiar with eVPN, eVPN is, uh, provides, it's a control plane for your VXLAN. VXLAN is just one of the data planes, but you can also use MPLS, but it's a BGP-based uh, control plane for your virtualization fabric. And here I'm saying that you can, you can build a eVPN fabric by having, using the VXLAN driver and the bridge driver again and the neighbor subsystem. I put some pointers to the, at the end of the um, slide to show how you can build this with Linux. So again, build it, when I say building blocks, it's a kernel neighbor table, which does ARP, ND, uh, and kernel VXLAN table, and the bridge table, and routing. VXLAN routing can be done um, also. And here's another picture of showing the details. So if you know any VXLAN control plane, it basically distributes. It's a distributed control plane where it shares max between VTEPs. And um, yeah, basically every VTEP is populated with the other nodes in the fabric. So here at the picture, I show the bridge and the VXLAN driver, and again, FRR is the control plane, BGP control plane. There are some notes here on how how FRR really shares these forwarding entries between nodes. 
So there is a lot more work going on. Uh, EVPN, there is a lot more going on in the EVPN co community as well, uh, in terms of control plane and new RFCs are coming out. And there is EVPN multi-homing and use of multicast with VXLAN, uh, PIM protocol. So there is a lot of ongoing work in the Linux kernel to support more of these features. Scaling Linux routing API, I have put a pointer to that, and that's, again, uh, some work we are doing to scale. Well, the routing API does scale today, but we are trying to get it in line with how the hardware supports uh, routing entries. So that's, we're going to see some ease of use and some consistency with uh, ASIC offload and uh, Linux routing API going forward. So in the community, Mellanox is one of the uh, core contributors with their drivers uh, and a lot of work they have been doing to get hardware management APIs for Switch ASIC. And this was, this started with, uh, it's called DevLink, and this is started with uh, Switch ASICs initially, but now it's, as you know, if you know a Linux box for L1, L2, there's ETH tool, and DevLink is kind of becoming the, that Netlink-based ETH tool API. Um, and there's a lot more moving to DevLink, like uh, firmware management. And this is, certainly it's moved across all devices, not just Switch ASIC, so it's, it's nice. We now have a new API which can be easily extendable. And debugability. There's a lot of, um, well, at least uh, for me, and also, you know, while we're debugging large-scale setup for the data center in case of eVPN and so on, we've been trying to add more perf trace features in the kernel or tracing capabilities or probes in the networking stack to understand uh, network events, uh, especially when you deploy it at a large scale in the data center. And kernel networking self-tests. This is another thing. Um, kernel has been encouraging a lot. The maintainer has been encouraging a lot of networking self-tests, whether it's forwarding or API tests. And also there is Sysbot. If you've not heard about Sysbot, Sysbot is a, uh, it's a bot. I think it's uh, deployed by Google. And it's been helping a lot to test the Linux kernel. So. It's, it's very easier on developers these days. You submit a patch and you get a sysbot report on how you're trying to crash the kernel or how you might be um, leaving a security hole. So it's, it's interesting work going on and there's a lot of support from the community for in the networking community to actually deploy these features. There I have a long list of references of all what I've talked about in case you're not following. Um, the community. So call to action. I think uh, this one is, has a pointer to the NetDev community itself um, and the free range routing community. There is a link to the Cumulus hardware compatibility list, which has a lot of OCP hardware and other hardware that supports Linux natively. There is a Linux networking conference called NetDev, which happens um, every year. It's next week, actually, in Prague. Um, if any, there is a hardware networking offload workshop where we will talk about NIC offloads and switch ASIC offloads, if, any, if anybody's interested. And of course, uh, ONI, our beloved ONI, there's a link to that. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's all. Any questions? So we'll open it up for questions now. Um, if you do have a question, please use the mics uh, so that Rupa can hear you and also so it can be recorded uh, on the recording that we're making. Thanks for the talk, Rupa. Yes. Where is it going? So, um, no, like, uh, the kernel now supports a fair set of uh, bridge, layer two, layer three, eVPN, VXLAN, and I saw a little bit of MPLS, but where do you think we should take it as a community? Should we take it towards the, the cloud providers or should we push it towards uh, a telco and uh, a 5G? 
adding more MPLS stuff into the kernel, where do you think we should focus taking it forward? Well, I would love to add more MPLS stuff in the kernel. I mean, it, MPLS has been one thing that's been coming up again and again, and we have not deployed uh, Linux, big Linux solutions over MPLS. I think that's one thing that we should do. But again, it's, well, it, what business demands, right? I've, we have been getting a lot of campus, uh, like the 802.1x and bridge and so on. So that's another area. And well, I think whatever we have today for cloud, we are cloud ready, right? You should tell me. I mean, you are, well, Aviad is from Mellanox, by the way. <laughs> so what do you see? I mean, Sorry, a question right. back to you. <laughs> so, yeah, on a personal level, uh, you know that I personally have been pushing uh, uh, Linux support in a switch offload as a personal uh, agenda. I think uh, what's going on currently in OCP, eventually down the road, everything will end up in Linux. I think that the only thing that currently prevails from going there is the, fa is the feature velocity meaning people are afraid of the amount of time when they need to be production. Mm -hmm. And if a feature is missing in the kernel, they know mm -hmm. how hard it is to get it outside. So I think that uh, as long as we are closing the gap as a community mm. with a feature set in the kernel, once it will get there, a Linux switch is a Linux switch. Yeah. And, and build your own apps on top of Linux, do is exactly as you're, you're doing on a hardware like you're doing on a server. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. About the feature velocity, right? I've seen it with EVPN, though. I mean, EVPN, we're, even the new networking RFCs that are coming out for EVPN, I have not seen uh, the kernel slowing us down, actually, because the VXLAN data plane was there. It's, and FRR community as a whole are developing FRR control planes, BGB control planes, very faster, in, at a faster rate. So in general, I think for EVPN, we've, I don't know the industry standard time for how much uh, longer it took for people to develop EVPN solutions, but I think our implementation go-to-market was the fastest in terms of, because we had most of it, right? The bridge and the neighbor system. Right? Sorry, what? That's a control plane. So the control plane no, control plane and the, so today we run the control plane on the Linux forwarding plane, right? Unlike. Uh, other OSs. We do use a neighbor subsystem. How much time did it take us to get VRF flight inside? It was well, yeah, sure. Well, we were the first when we got in. We did get it in a few months. But um, now the thing is, the advantage is if you see, WARF is being used everywhere, right? You, it's being used on host and hypervisors too. So that's the, that's the advantage we see. Even if it's taking a little longer, you're, you can use it anywhere. We have customers who are trying to deploy EVPN, the same EVPN on host right now, which is just good to see. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, I, uh, can you talk a little bit more about SwitchDev? Is, is there any traction from the ASIC vendors apart from Melnox and the SwitchDev to provide drivers for the SwitchDev? No, we have only seen uh, Melnox so far. Cavium, I can't speak for other vendors who are trying to, but Cavium did express interest, but you know, I don't know where Cavium is right now, but uh, Mellanox is one of been the strong driver. And I think, I, for Mellanox, I think whatever you guys are developing, I mean, it's helping your Nick business too, I would say. Uh, I mean, you guys are doing a good job about, yeah, kind of normalizing some of that. I think Cavium's part of Marvell now. Yeah. Mellanox is part of NVIDIA now. Everybody's getting <laughs> oh, acquired. <yes. laughs> uh, any more questions? Okay, thank you, Rupa. Thank you.